My first video on this channel was about Games Workshop's squat range from the 80s, which I've had in various forms for years now. But over the years since squats were discontinued, various companies have made their own version of Dwarves in Space, some of which are obvious homages to the Games Workshop range, and some of which are totally different. I've picked up a few over the years, but which are the squattiest? In this video I'm going to look at ranges by seven different manufacturers, some just as out of print as the squats and some relatively new. There are resin, plastic and old lead models in there, so for ease of comparison and to avoid shiny metal I've sprayed them all with a thin coat of grey sear primer. Well, mostly all. Some arrived after my primer had run out and getting spray paints from Games Workshop is a little difficult right now. We're going to judge them by how much they fit with the old squat concept, how well they'd work on a modern 40k games table and how available they are. Right, we need a benchmark, so let's start with a look at the design cues on the original squat models. The original squats were sculpted in the late 80s by Alan and Michael Perry, with some additional models by Bob Ollie, and they have a really distinctive style. They were a mostly metal range with one plastic kit, and the models are short and stocky with the distinctive deep cartoonish features and oversized heads and hands of Rogue Trader models. Brotherhood squats wear standard sci-fi helmets that almost look like Star Wars Rebel helmets, especially with the visors down, and then a quilted flak jacket over a tunic. They occasionally have bits of armour or studded shoulder pads over that. Their legs are often hidden by big flappy fantasy boots, with only the odd model showing a knee pad in between where the tunic ends and the boots begin. They're also covered in pouches, packs and webbing. The other half of the range, the Engineers Guild, are styled as like space bikers, and you can see the influence across the whole model line, with forage caps, cigars, sunglasses, handlebar moustaches on all sorts of models. They're obviously meant to be space dwarves, but the amount of fantasy stuff on them is actually quite restrained. They've all got beards, but not long flowing braided ones. There are a lot of power axes but no hammers, and the amount of rune-like detailing is restricted to command staff or specialists. For size comparison we'll use these four models. A standard metal squat with a las gun, the end of which has since fallen off, a commander with a power axe, an exo squat, and a plastic trooper from the Space Dwarf box. You can see how while the range were quite consistent in size, the plastic models were a little smaller. So that's our benchmark, but Games Workshop have a few more options. First up is Necromunda's Grendel Grendelson, the first actual squat model released by Games Workshop in 40,000 years. As you can see, they've kept a lot of the basic design cues. The helmet, visor and quilted jacket are all there, although the comedy proportions of the head and hands have been evened out to something a bit more realistic. And he's got legs. He's also got a few more of the fantasy dwarf cues, like the beard and hammer, but overall I think he's a really good homage to the 80s models. Of course, the biggest difference here is scale. Necromodels are already slightly larger than comparable 40k ones, and he towers over the old models. He's actually the tallest and one of the chunkiest models on this list, and if you wanted enough squats to play a game with him, well, I think the only other models that could reasonably look good next to him are the last Games Workshop offering here, Age of Sigmar's Caradron Overlords. I know these guys aren't intended to be Space Dwarves, but the concept is pretty similar, and they're an obvious Games Workshop legal option for anyone wanting a squat army. The design though is very different. They're bigger and more heavily armoured than squats, and their vibe is steampunk more than sci-fi comedy. They scale okay next to Grendel, they're not quite as tall but they're a similar sort of build, but you'd need to do some conversion work to make them visually fit. I'm also unsure what you'd use them as in a 40k army. Traditionally squats end up being used as Imperial Guard, but these guys are way too heavily armed and armoured for that. Maybe Scions? Or even Space Marines? And I'd probably ditch the flying boats. I think they might look really good jumping out of a termite drill. So that's Games Workshop done, let's move on to the competitors. <laughs> These metal space dwarves were sculpted by Mark Sims of Black Tree Designs in the late 90s, and they were released by Harlequin Miniatures. I think they're a good V2 of the squat look. The forage caps, cigars and quilted jackets are all there, and they're carrying weapons that could easily pass for 40k las guns. The full range is only six sculpts, and they're all metal, and really really crisply cast. They're really nice models. However, they're a bit bigger than the original squats, probably too big to mix in with them in an army, also, they're now out of print. Black Tree are still making models and still making dwarfs, but not sci-fi ones. 
Next up are the Dvargs, originally sculpted by Mark Clay at Outcast Miniatures and then sold to Black Hat Miniatures. Another small metal range, these guys obviously take their cues from a mix of the Biker Engineers Guild look and some elements of the Fantasy Slayers. They're muscular, chunky metal models with a really goofy steampunk feel and comically huge guns. They're still a fair bit bigger than the original squats, but they actually scale really well with the black tree models. These aren't quite as nicely cast though. There's a fair amount of metal that will need removing to use them. Again, these are now out of print. Black Hat miniatures are still trading, but they mostly sell hobby materials. So let's look at something you might actually still buy. <laughs> These are the Grimm, sculpted by Kevin White and produced by Hasslefree. Hasslefree have been around for ages and have a truly colossal range of models for all sorts of games. The Grimm are an extensive range of high-tech, beardless space dwarves with massive guns. So extensive that the range includes these power armoured suits. The design here is very different though. They're much simpler models and they have a modern, sleek sci-fi look. They look like they'd fit much better in something like Infinity rather than in 40k. They're also much smaller, smaller than even the original Original squat models, they're barely the size of a 40k Ratling. However, they are still in production, there's a huge amount of choice, and they're only about £3 a model. Nice if you like the style, but in my opinion they're the least useful models here. Macrocosm's Digger Core are next up. They're the newest metal models on here, and they're absolutely my favourite. They're an unabashed homage to the old Games Workshop range with similar armour and styling, but sculpted in a more modern, delicate and proportional style. They're also an extremely good size match for the Games Workshop squats. I think they're probably the only range on the list that you could mix with the old models and almost not notice. At the time of writing, they're in production, and the range includes basic troopers, bikers, special weapons and leaders. Enough to build a small army. They're all metal, and like the hassle-free range, they work out to around £3 a model, so cheaper than modern Games Workshop plastic. As well as the Digger Core, Macrocosm also produce a different Space Dwarf range that are more similar to Games Workshop in comedy proportion, but less similar to the old squats in style. But if you want something that looks and feels like the originals, then the Digger Core are probably the closest you're going to get. Finally, we have the plastic option, starting with Mantix Forge Fathers. Mantix specializes in big armies, and these were one of the first ranges they ever released. In design, they've got that heavily armoured steampunk feel, a bit like the Caradron, which Games Workshop actually brought out after these guys. They have clockwork style weapons and quite a lot of carbon detail, and in scale, they're somewhere between the older and the new models. They're on the taller side. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the squared off angular look that a lot of the Mantic Dwarf ranges have. And there's not a lot of variety in pose available. They're also pretty horrible to assemble. I found they just didn't fit together that well and they have some really fiddly bits. Those shoulder pads are separate pieces. On the other hand, Mantic make a huge and full army for them, including vehicles, dreadnoughts, exo-armor equivalents, and they're all priced really, really well. A standard trooper works out around £1 per model, and they do huge army deals. If you want to get a full plastic Space Dwarf army easily, well, they're a really, really good option. Lastly, the Einhajar are the newest on the list, a plastic kit released by Wargames Atlantic as part of their Death Fields range. Each sprue builds three Space Dwarves and comes with tons of extra options for heads and weapons. In style, they're somewhere between the old plastic squats and a sort of Norse Viking look. The sprue includes heads for both looks, as well as optional extras like Viking style shields and axes, and the guns look like they'd fit right in on the 40k battlefield. However, they're very slight, slim models. Wargames Atlantic mostly produce historicals, so they're probably the most realistically proportioned, but they just don't have that stocky, heroic scale dwarf look that I want. It's also worth saying that they're not very detailed, and what detail there is, is quite shallow. They're sold in boxes of 24 models that work out again to around a pound per model, but that's eight of the same three model sprue. It's a really nice sprue, but I think they'll get samey after a while. Generally, I think these are a good, basic option, and you could build them to look more like the old squat range than, say, Forge Fathers, but you'd have to do a lot more work to make a full army look good. 
So there's a lot out there, whether you want an easy plastic army, something more akin to the classics, or something completely different. How much trouble you're going to go to also depends on if you're building uh, 10 amazing models for Necromunda gangs or kill teams, or 100 for a Counts as Guard army. I'm probably going to chop up these Caradron and try and make them into a Necromunda gang, and the rest of the metals will probably find their way into my slowly growing classic squad army, maybe as like specialist squads. And I know there's more out there that I haven't got hold of yet. Bob Ollie still makes some Space Dwarves, and I know there's some Eastern European manufacturers that do some similar models. Maybe if I find enough of them, I'll do a part two. Until then, thanks for watching. Thank you.